So what is going on, everyone? Today we're going to be breaking down UFC 287's main event, Israel Adesanya versus Alex Poetan Pereira, their second meeting in mixed martial arts, their fourth meeting overall, if you count kickboxing. So we're going to get right into it. Obviously, guys, they're, they're both coming off that first fight, right? I like to normally go back and break down the both of these fighters' last fights. They both fought each other last. That is both of these guys' last fights. They both fought each other. Alex Pereira obviously beat Israel Adesanya in the fifth round at UFC 281 in New York in November of 2023. It was a great fight. Israel Adesanya looked to be up three rounds to one. And in the fifth round, he got caught with a first uppercut to start the exchange, then a left hook. Then he was just pretty much wobbled along the fence, fell down, got back up. Mark Goddard gave him a chance, and then, you know, he put his hands down. You could still argue to this day early stoppage, which I think I still would argue to this day. I think that if you've seen Israel Adesanya versus Kelvin Gastelum, I've seen Israel Adesanya hurt before. People, I think, were shocked because we haven't seen it in so long. It's crazy you can go about five fights, maybe five or six fights, without seeing you get hurt like that once. So, yeah, he was clearly... He was clearly hurt, and it reminded me of the Kelvin Gaston fight at UFC 236. But, you know, this one got stopped, and I can see an argument for the stoppage. So I don't I don't go crazy against Mark Goddard. I think it was a stoppage that, that is the reason we're also getting this fight so quickly. Because I think if you allow that fight to maybe go 20 more seconds, yeah, sure, Israel Adesanya might have uh, recovered and lasted for a minute, then we never get this fight. But I think that if you don't stop that fight right there, what most likely happens Alex Pereira keeps hitting Israel Adesanya, knocks him out cold, and then we have to wait maybe a year for this rematch. And maybe we never see that rematch again if Israel Adesanya gets knocked out cold because maybe then Hamza Chimaev or somebody jumps in there and j takes that spot because Israel Adesanya might have to take so long off. But yeah, so this fight was about five months ago now, and I don't think much can change in that time, for especially for Israel Adesanya. I think for Alex Poetan Pereira, he can he can have a better grappling time, right? He's learning every month that goes by him with uh, Glover Teixeira and all the training that he's doing in New Jersey is helping him. You know what I mean? Or is it? I think it's Connecticut, Dansbury, Connecticut. Yeah. So I think, you know, any time that goes by, he's getting more skilled in the sport of mixed martial arts, right? He's a kickboxer, comes over. Now he's better than he was five months ago. Israel Adesanya might not be better because he is not be that much better because he's been in the UFC he's been in MMA for so long now and I just think that this fight though the last fight was very close a lot of people forget about it you know it was Israel Adesanya domination but Israel Adesanya was losing the first round to Alex Pereira until pretty much the last two three seconds of the fight and the first round he lands a big right hand and then a big left hook that really wobbles Alex Pereira and you know it just I don't know it just it doesn't sit well with me that people act like Israel Adesanya dominated the fight. I get he was winning in those circumstances, but if you take out that one punch at the end of round one, dominant implies you've won a period of time. He could be point fighting, point fighting and win rounds. So what he was doing is he won round one, he won round three, and he won round four. And he won round three by grappling, and it was a bad takedown trip by Alex Pereira. And if you forget, at the end of round two, Alex Pereira took down Israel Adesanya. Now, I know Israel Adesanya was not expecting it. That's the reason Alex Pereira was able to get that takedown. But again, if Alex Pereira makes his takedowns into his game, he could have some groundwork in his game where he might be taking down Israel Adesanya. I don't see him being very successful in that. I think that his best chance is on the feet. Now, if you hear Israel Adesanya in interviews, you know, he's talking about putting Alex Pereira on his back, which does imply that Israel Adesanya is going to grapple in this fight. And... You know, everybody is pre predicting Alex Pereira, even though Israel Adesanya is the favorite. Most, pretty much every YouTuber, every TikTok person that I've watched, every breakdown has pretty much picked Alex Pereira for a variety of reasons. Mostly that being every month he goes by, he's getting better in mixed martial arts. And then also that first, the first fight was pretty telling, you know what I mean? He was winning the first round, winning the second round. If you take out that one spot, it was two to two. And if he doesn't go for that trip, he might win the third round. So very, very, you know, people were, I think they were saying that, you know, he was winning these exchanges mostly on the feet for the most part. And I agree with that. I do. I think that Alex Pereira has, was winning most of that fight on the feet. And I think though that Israel Adesanya 
has kind of regressed as of recent. I don't want to say he's regressed, but I want to say I think he's less taking chances. Like, I think he's just, he fights much more defensively, which I will admit he's a better defensive fighter than Alex Pereira is. I think Pereira is much more hittable. All you got to do is watch the Bruno Silva fight to see that he gets hit more. Israel Adesanya, you barely see the man get hit clean. I'm going to be honest, you just don't see him get hit clean that often. I think he's the more defensively responsible fighter. And I do think Alex Perez is the better kickboxer overall because he had he's a double weight world champion in glory kickboxing. I think he had the better kickboxing career. And he does have insane nuclear power. Now, I don't know if he's better defensively though in kickboxing. He might be the better kickboxer, but I don't think he's better defensively in kickboxing. And you know, the big the big question is, is Israel Asanya gonna try and implement more grappling in this fight? I could see a fight where Israel Adesanya puts this up against the fence and he's keeping Alex Pereira there for all five rounds or a very, very, very dominant round or dominant rounds by Israel Adesanya by just grappling. So, you know, if you take Isra if you take Alex Pereira's fights in the UFC, he got grappled in his first round, he lost his first round, and then he was able to find the flying knee in the second round. That was at UFC to that was 268 that was Kamara Usman versus Colby Covington that was his debut Madison Square Garden he debuted at Madison Square Garden he's been on the big stage then after that he took a fight against Bruno Silva which had absolutely no hype behind it at all at the apex and they almost blew it because it was a very tough fight for Alex Pereira that Bruno Silva fight in which he was getting outstruck at times and then if you look at the if you look at the fight against Sean Strickland he just pretty much walked them down and hit him with that left hook that puts everybody out. So, you know, it's, I think that Alex Pereira's career, people think he's very, very scary, but I think there's a way for Israel Adesanya to beat him. I think that Israel Adesanya, if he is able to back up Alex Pereira, you have to be the bully. Alex Pereira fights like a bully. You've got to push this man back. If you don't push him back, he's able to throw all of his kicks. He's able to throw all of his strong punches. His left hook is when he plants on that back right foot so if you don't allow him to get these springy punches and you just back the man up like bruno silva did i think there's a chance that you beat him you front kick him to the stomach and push this man up against the fence and just overall just march him down but Al but isra adesanya was getting lured into that first in the first fight he was getting lured the entire fight where he had to play defensive he was doing a decent job at it he was kicking alex Pereira's leg but his leg got injured you know what i mean because alex alex Pereira is not Marvin Vittori. Alex Pereira is not, I hate to say it, even Robert Whitaker. He is a an elite kickboxer that can block leg kicks and check leg kicks to the point where it doesn't, they don't even, they're not even benefiting Israel Adesanya like they were in the Robert Whitaker fight. You know, in that Robert Whitaker fight, he pretty much won the fight on the leg kicks. If you look at the fight with Alex Pereira, the leg kicks were landing for Izzy, but they just, most of them were checked once they got into it. And then Alex Pereira was kicking the legs back. So I think that Alex Pereira has the advantage in that type of just standstill, just slow pace fight. I think there needs to be a faster pace for for Israel Adesanya if he's going to win this fight as well. I don't think I think a slow pace always will favor Alex Pereira because he is a bigger puncher. So he's not going to be throwing that much in. Obviously, he's going to be throwing in combinations, but he's not going to be throwing as fast. You know what I mean? I think Israel Adesanya is faster. I think Alex Pereira is going to sit there. Claude, I think that if you just have Israel Adesanya duck in there fast, land some punches, and then push him backwards, he's just going to be standing there, and he's going to be open for everything. I think Israel Adesanya, I have faith in his abilities. I think he's going to go out there, and he's going to knock Alex Pereira out. That is my prediction for this fight. I think you're, everybody's talking bad about Israel Adesanya. Pretty much the sentiment is that Alex Pereira is going to do it again, and you know he just has Israel Adesanya's number. I don't know. I just think that Israel Adesanya is going to be able to do something. I think that Alex Pereira has the has the better kickboxing skills at times, but I don't think he has better kickboxing in MMA. I want to just say it. I think when you implement everything in MMA, I don't think he's a better fighter than Israel Adesanya. I think overall, Israel Adesanya is still the better fighter, and I think that Israel Adesanya is going to find some punch, something, just like he did in the first round of the first fight of in MMA. I think he is going to find something that puts out, puts Pereira out. And I think it's going to be a standing TKO, just like how Israel Adesanya was finished. And just like I've seen Alex Pereira finished in kickboxing. That's how I see this fight playing out.
I see Israel Adesanya marching him down. I don't see him sticking back and playing on the fence like he did, where if Alex Pereira cuts you off, which he was doing an amazing job of cutting off Israel Adesanya, I think we're going to see an Israel Adesanya that marches him down, that cuts off Alex Pereira's octagon, that Israel Adesanya will dictate the octagon instead of Alex Pereira just kind of plotting and just keeping Israel Adesanya against the fence the whole time, which is what we saw in that first fight. Izzy got baited in to just stay in there by the fence, which is why he got caught with that big right hand and with the uppercut and then the left hook. So he he's on the fence. I don't think Israel Adesanya thrives on the fence like he thinks he does. I think that was pretty much Jared Cannonier and Robert Whitaker. You know, he he did good where he was dancing and then put and then, you know, kind of running along the fence while the other guys were in the center of the octagon. I think for Alex Pereira it's going to require I think it's going to require him marching down Alex Pereira, exchanging with him. He might get caught. He might get caught. But I'm sensing a fourth round Israel Adesanya TKO standing along the fence. And maybe Israel Adesanya does get hurt in the fight. I expect him to recover this time. I think even if Alex Pereira gets a complete knockdown on Israel Adesanya, you will see Israel Adesanya recover. And I think you will see Israel Adesanya shoot at times in this fight. And I think that might not just be to dominate Alex Pereira on the ground, but just to put a new element in the game, right? Because I think if you do the same thing, where you do the exact same thing, Alex Pereira is going to find that shot maybe even quicker this time. So that's why I feel Israel Adesanya has to do something different. He has to switch it up. And if he does switch it up, I think that he wins the fight. Let me know how you guys see this fight going down. I want to hear all your predictions in the comments. Let me know. Again, if you want to go back and watch all my UFC 287 predictions between Gilbert Burns and Jorge Masvidal and all the fights on the main card and maybe even some of the prelims, make sure you just watch the playlist that I put below. It will be coming out soon. All of my predictions will be coming out by the time fights roll around on Saturday night. Make sure you watch. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out. I'll see you in the next one.